this is going to be a webinar on the topic of introduction to cooperative adaptive cruise control for intelligent vehicular flow so jumping right into the content we begin by discussing the fundamentals of the concept of cacc uh, for duration of the webinar we will be calling cooperative adaptive cruise control as cacc for the ease of it uh, so the first topic will be fundamentals of platooning followed by functionality of cacc and then benefits and challenges followed by a small short video which explains the entire concept again and then we will end by some career discussions first what is platooning now uh, platooning is a fairly simple concept which involves a group of vehicles traveling together generally to the sim same objective but the key part over here which differentiates between platooning and a regular group of vehicles is the platoon vehicles follow a structured format uh, another unique factor of platooning is that there is communication between each and every vehicle traveling in the platoon now a platoon has two simple basic rules it has a lead vehicle and a follower vehicles so there is active communication between each vehicle between the lead and the followers in form of data transfer and even instructions from the lead vehicle to the other following vehicles there are two additional concepts in platooning which are lateral and longitudinal control now obviously longitudinal control is a much easier uh, control method for platooning to implement so we will discuss both these things later on so what is cacc it is a, an amalgamation of cooperative control and adaptive cruise control it is often loosely and synonymously exchanged with the word platooning so there has to be a difference between the word platooning and cacc this is also a topic which we will be touching ahead so jumping onto the topic of cacc now i just told you that it is come a combination of adaptive cruise control and cooperative control now adaptive cruise control like the words say cruise control so this itself becomes a combination of two interesting technologies which we have in our vehicles first is the basic cruise control and the second is the collision avoidance so it becomes a step up from the regular cruise control which we get uh, in vehicles generally in india now the vehicles available in europe or europe uh, american markets are mostly fitted with adaptive cruise controls so in layman terms, if you see this, uh, the adaptive cruise control assists the driver to maintain a safe distance from the front vehicle, which is basically the role of the collision avoidance. So the vehicle is driving itself through the cruise control. And at the same time, collision avoidance is going to take a role in the system to decide whether to break the vehicle or not in case of an incoming object onto the road. This again has two modes. One mode is cruise mode. And the other one is follow. Uh, cruise mode is quite simple. The speed of the vehicle is controlled at a set speed. And a follow mode is slightly more different. The speed of the vehicle here is controlled to maintain a set distance from the vehicle in front. I'll just say, say this again. The cruise mode is to maintain only the speed of the vehicle at a set value, whereas follow mode is to maintain the speed of the vehicle by a set distance from the vehicle in front. I hope these two modes are clear because this forms an essential basis for CACC in itself. Uh, I just mentioned two minutes back that there are two fundamental concepts involving CACC. One was adaptive cruise control and the other one is cooperative control. Cooperative ACC. The word cooperative itself is quite explanatory if you look at it. The word cooperative tells us that we are interacting and communicating with multiple objects at the same time. Now, just going back to the previous slide, if you look here in the Im image, the blue vehicle is sensing the vehicle in front, right? So the blue vehicle is talking to itself about its environment, which might be a vehicle in front or an obstacle or a road hazard or anything. So it's ha it has an image detection or a radar or a LIDAR fitted in itself, which is taking a 
input from the environment and the system fitted inside the blue vehicle, which is the ACC, the adaptive cruise control, that function, that system takes a decision on ba based on that. So in cooperative, it's a level above. So now the vehicle in front will also talk to the vehicle at the back. Over here, you can see the three vehicles, each and every vehicle will communicate with each other as well as these three vehicles will communicate to infrastructure, which has been set up along the traveling path, which can be a red light, the signals or a networking hub or a power station as to what is the road conditions ahead or uh, speed information coming that in the next section of the road, there are speed limitations. So the vehicle will receive information from the road that in the next section, for example, the top speed is 100 kilometers per hour. So the vehicle will know that the 100 kilometers per hour is the top speed and it will alert the user or the driver that this section has started. So you have to only drive below this speed. So this is one example of the information from vehicle to infrastructure and infrastructure to vehicle. Now, like I said, adaptive cruise control is a singular communicative system, whereas cooperative control becomes a multi communicative system. Now, when you combine cooperative control to adaptive cruise control, this forms the main crux of our topic, the cooperative adaptive cruise control. So if you look at the four words making up the, the whole topic, cooperative adaptive cruise control, the first basic word is cruising. So all of us or a lot of VFs traveled on roads in India or Europe or America or in multiple places. So whenever we go on highways, we naturally start cruising at a set speed by keeping our foot stable on the accelerator, right? So that's cruising. Now we come a step ahead. So we have this system called cruise control. So you just set a speed in the car. You don't need to touch the accelerator anymore. And the car is going to continuously drive at that set speed. You have to just take care of the steering. That's level two. Now you have another level above. ACC, adaptive cruise control. So this in this level, the vehicle is communicating in itself with the obstacle avoidance and the vehicle in front to tell itself, okay, I'm driving at the set speed. So if there is an obstacle in front, I need to break down or I need to inform the driver to slow down the car. Now we have another step ahead, cooperative adaptive cruise control. The vehicle is going to not only talk to itself, but to other cars on the road, as well as the infrastructure. So this becomes a layered up cruising format for cars, which is quite prominent today. And an important factor over here, which becomes is in basic cruising without any in sensory input, the driver is responsible for stating of the car. Again, in each and every level, as we keep on increasing it, in a cruise controlled car or an adaptive cruise controlled car or a cooperatively adaptive cruise controlled car, the driver is still responsible for controlling the steering. So this is a very important part of cooperative adaptive cruise control. In the start, I mentioned about platooning that we can have longitudinal as well as lateral control of the vehicle. In CACC, we only have longitudinal control because the steering is, is a responsibility of the driver, which is basically the lateral control. Now, if you eliminate lateral control from platooning, that does not mean it becomes a CACC. Whereas if you add lateral control to CACC, then it becomes a subset of platooning. So I hope this these points are clear to you. So the first two lines in the presentation uh, tell you about the same thing which we just discussed. When we are talking about CACC, I just told you that the infrastructure is sending information to the vehicle. Vehicle to vehicle communication and infrastructure to vehicle communication can happen without CACC as well. You don't need a CACC to work the communication between infrastructure to vehicle. You just need a set of box or a communication device inside the car. So in a CACC, the advantage of this communication becomes that the infrastructure needs to connect with only the first car in the platoon. So you see three cars over here. The infrastructure is going to talk to the 
first lead car and tell okay there is this problem now the lead car will send the information to the other cars like you see in the arrows first the green arrow i to v is working to the first car then the orange arrows are moving to the other car so the infrastructure does not need to continuously communicate with all the cars running in the cooperative adaptive control it just needs to tell the first car so this is a feature of cacc so another very important difference between platooning and cacc is the constant distance and the constant time gap control strategies the first difference was the longitudinal and lateral control cacc only has longitudinal control whereas platooning can have both or either one of them in another difference now becomes uh, in platooning the vehicles traveling in platooning systems rely on a constant distance gap so the distance between the two vehicles is going to remain constant that is the control strategy which is adopted by the system to maintain whereas in cacc the constant time gap strategy comes into effect here the distance between the vehicles is proportional to the speed do you get the difference uh, it is an absolute value in platooning whereas in cacc it is a proportional value with the speed so this is a very important difference i think this slide will explain this much better so over here in this image this will help you understand this better you can see three different trucks and there are these variables written between these trucks x2 double dot xr dot xr and x between the second between the other pair there is our respective variables so these variables are basically telling us the relative acceleration between these two vehicles relative speed and relative distance correspondingly for the other pair now in platooning you only have one variable which is in consideration which is the distance whereas over here all three are into consideration because like i said it's a constant time gap strategy over a constant distance strategy uh, so another uh, simple point in platooning are called platoon whereas vehicles in a cacc are called string so from now on we will be referring it to, to vehicles in a cacc as string string formation now i just told you that a series of vehicles in cacc are called a string so how does this string form like it's not that the vehicles are just popping up randomly on the road and they just come into a straight line and start following a system right it's not like that you have to form a string on the road when the vehicles are traveling so the first step in the entire concept is activating the cacc the driver sitting in the vehicle is activating a cacc so the that vehicle is going to have a localization feature the word localization means that it will identify where the vehicle itself is in the map it can be a short map or a small map it's not exactly gps first of all it is the vehicle is going to send out short burst of short range communication in the communication range and identify different vehicles in its range okay so suppose i am standing at 0,0, .0 and i will send out a burst of signals in all directions and i find that there is a truck at 1,1 2,0 and 1,0 so i found three different trucks in my range which are at these coordinates with respect to me so when I'm sitting in the truck and I have to activate it CAC, it will show me three different options now. There are three different trucks. So now I can choose from these three different trucks because they were shown uh, in the CACC module. So I will choose between one of these three trucks that, okay, I want to connect to this truck and form a string. Now this list of vehicles can be given through a graphical format, a top view satellite graphical format, or a list based format showing the registration number of the truck, color of the truck, different kinds of features can be added to identify which truck is at which relative position. So the relative position of the truck to which you want to connect to is very important because that is going to give information to the driver that he has to turn the steering in at a certain direction to join that string. The next step, is once the driver selects a target string. Okay, so I'm sitting in a truck, I've activated CAC and I've selected, oh, let's join one comma one. I've clicked one comma one. So the lead truck 
of the string at one comma one will get a notification. Hi, there is a truck who wants to join you. The driver Mirav is requesting to join you in it, in your string. Do you approve? So the truck, the the lead of this truck at one comma one will approve this request. Only then the truck will be able to join the CACC because this is important because all the trucks in a string are at a common platform. And if it is a unauthorized connection, then it can lead to a mishap or an accident. So approval from the lead truck is a very important step. Once the approval is given, the lead truck system will calculate certain instructions for the new truck, incoming truck and the lead truck itself. Okay, the lead truck is going to tell Merov's truck that you need to accelerate and change your lane from lane one to lane two to join the string. You need to accelerate by 20 kilometers per hour and my truck will deaccelerate by 10 kilometers per hour. Only then our string will be complete. Once the lead truck sends this information to the incoming truck, both these trucks will start accelerating and deaccelerating at the same time to achieve a target speed so that the, the coordination and the string is complete. Once both these trucks are coordinated and in a similar in the same lane the cacc mode will engage please mind till now the cacc was just active from this point onwards cacc will engage so there is a difference between activating cacc and engaging cacc so now that the cacc is engaged which means that both the trucks are in the same lane and the lead truck and the and the new incoming truck which has become a following truck are together coordinated so once the cacc is engaged these trucks will both become to the original speed of cruise control so just to clarify this last point when i was at 0 comma 0 train truck was at 1 comma 1 it was traveling at a set speed for its cruise control now i wanted to go and join that guy i told him i'm coming to you so he said okay you you go come at this speed and then you can join us. I go join them at a certain speed. And now I have to synchronize with them at the target speed, which is the speed of the string at which the string is traveling. So once my truck is in coordination with them, I will get the new instruction that this is the new speed and the truck will accelerate to the set target speed and stop accelerating and continue with at with the constant velocity. Now, this is the core function of the CACC. By core function, I mean the primary state of operation. What is exactly the primary state? It is, this is the purpose why CACC is meant to exist. So steady state cruising. Steady state cruising is what the vehicle drivers will be doing most of the time when CACC is engaged. Once the string is formed, the drivers will only be responsible for active steering of the vehicle. Like I told, there is no lateral control in this, only longitudinal control. So the drivers will be responsible for active steering and monitoring the vehicle status and traffic conditions through the V2V communication. But steady state cruising can be interrupted when trucks want to join or get out from the string or split itself from the string. So during these times the driver supervision is very necessary there is another condition when the driver supervision is very important if there is a small suppose there are five trucks traveling in a string and there is a small car which comes in between two trucks cuts in between the two trucks so this is going to create a break in the string because the cutting is unavoidable on real life road situations, the CACC system needs to be designed to automatically handle the cut in by splitting the string. For example, there are five trucks. So between the third and the fourth truck, a car comes in. So now we have two separate strings between of three trucks and two trucks. So the smaller string of two trucks in that there is a new temporary lead truck, the fourth truck basically. So that truck will join the string again once the cut-in vehicle leaves the, the string lane. So once that car goes away, so the fourth truck, since it's the temporary lead truck, it will make the effort to join the original string again. And once the joining is complete, the lead power will be restored to the first truck for all five trucks.